All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an assembly drawing. And assembly drawings, you know, they're, they're, they have significantly different elements of them than, just say, an individual part drawing. Um, again, go through the tutorial, but I want to I want to walk you through a couple tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that I think really make it make it make a real nice assembly drawing that I think you'll be able to take advantage of. So here I'm going to grab the ANSI uh, millimeter.dwg file and I'm going to create a base component. Now I don't have an assembly open right now, but this is when you go through and say I want to select a specific file to create a drawing out of. I'm going to go into the worm gear folder inside your tutorial files, scroll down to the worm gear and place my views. So here I want say something like a, like a quarter scale. So I could, I mean technically I could create um, this right here and you know place the uh, the assembly view, the isometric view and and be fairly happy with this and go through and grab an, uh, a parts list and put you know place the parts list inside of the drawing just like so. But you know in all reality this uh, um, it's, it, it seems to be lacking. There's some internal components there that I, that I can't really see um, that I'd really like to be able to display inside of, um, inside of this view that I can associate balloons to uh, and, uh, uh, you know, seems reasonable uh, to, to, to want to request. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to change the size of this sheet. It feels like I'm, I'm getting, uh, getting a little crowded here. So let's just go ahead and say uh, right click on the sheet in the browser and say edit sheet and go from a C size to a D size. Now that's great. I, I've got a lot more room to work with here in the, inside of this assembly and, uh, and I'm going to get rid of the side view and I'm going to get rid of the, uh, uh, the isometric view because really what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a section view. Okay, So I'm going to right click inside the view, I'm going to grab section view and draw my section line. And you'll notice I'm doing some object tracking. Um, real handy, uh, handy tool to be able to do some object tracking while you're in the context of, of this. Um, grab that center point there. Make sure that I'm parallel and I am. And just draw it through just like that. Continue. And I'm going to move this over and as you can see I'm getting a real nice preview as to what this section view is going to look like. Now the problem with this section view however is that it's sectioning, it's sectioning everything so that when I create my isometric view of my section view, all of the components that I would rather like to display, uh, you know, the, the full element of them, well, they're not being displayed. So let's, let's make a change to that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and change the scale of this isometric view as well as its display properties. Again, editing the views is just a simple matter of double clicking on them so that I can get a, a really nice sized isometric view that's sectioned. Again, the problem is it's sectioning all the components and I want to make a change to that. Now, the, the quick and easiest way to do that is I'm going to shift and right click. We haven't talked anything about selection filters yet, but that's what, uh, that's what, that's what I've called up here. It's a selection filter. So if I shift and right click and say, you know what, I want you to grab parts, not edges inside of a drawing, but I want you to grab entire parts. And if I go down into the section view here, and grab a, a component, maybe hold down the shift key, grab a couple more components that I don't want it to, uh, to section, those two right there, right click and say section participation, set that to none. What it's going to do is it's going gonna, it's gonna to draw the full part so that in my sectioned out isometric view here, I get a full part where a full part is most appropriate. Because what I want to do is I want to auto balloon. Now access to the auto balloon is, is through the pull down, um, but you basically tell it what uh, what view you want to balloon, um, what components you want it to balloon, and then its placement. So I want a horizontal placement. So if I pick the placement right here, uh, maybe a vertical uh, placement is more appropriate. So I'll just say vertical placement right there. Choose OK, and now. Not only have I created an isometric view along with a, uh, with a parts list and ballooned them, but I'm also pointing to all the internal components. So I don't believe the, uh, the tutorial uh, quite went through that level of detail, but um, I, I think it's important, something that I certainly took advantage of uh, in, pr in production uh, utilizing Inventor and, and something that I think you will too. So that basically concludes our getting the most out of your 30-day trial 
with Autodesk Inventor. I hope I didn't take up too much of your trial time, um, but I hope that you, you also found it extremely useful. Don't forget to follow our blog at the Manufacturing Community, and that's mfgcommunity.autodesk.com. Um, easy way to get a hold of me, you'll find me on Twitter, um, and you'll find me on Facebook utilizing, uh, if you search for Autodesk Inventor, well, that's, uh, that's us as well. So if you have any questions throughout your tutorial, there's a community of people that are, that are um, excited to help, uh, me being one of them. Um, again, hope, hopefully, you found this, uh, this, hopefully you found this time useful. And uh, best of luck. You know how to get a hold of us. Uh, can't wait to, to, to include you in part of our user community at manufacturingcommunity.honoredus.com. We'll see you.